All right, so we're now going to shift gears uh, a little bit, and we're going to try to figure out how to integrate some more of the trig functions. And basically all the trig stuff that we've seen in the past has either been taking a derivative, or if we were integrating, it was just doing an antiderivative. So we were just trying to work our way backwards. Uh, but we're going to learn how to integrate uh, some of these slightly more complicated trig functions. And, and the example I want to kind of talk about before we get into the notes would be like out of those four integrals, so we really just look at the top three. Okay, so we have secant squared, secant tan, and then you have just the regular secant by itself. Well, it's kind of the same thing with the tangent. But out of these three, right, it would appear to us that the secant would, would probably be the easiest because it's it's the one that just has the secant by itself and nothing else is attached to it. Typically, whenever we see stuff in math, like the more things there are, the harder it's probably going to be. But this one, since the secant is by itself, right, we would, we would actually think that it may look like the easiest integral, but it's actually not going to be. Out of these three integrals, by far, that's the hardest of the three. And the same thing, like comparing the tangent versus the secant tangent, like the tangent by itself is a lot harder because there's no basic antiderivative for tangent tangent, where there's no basic antiderivative for secant. I know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Therefore, the integral of secant squared is just tangent plus c, right? And I know the derivative of secant is secant tan. So therefore, if I'm working my way backwards, it's just going to spit you back. If I'm integrating a secant tan, it's just going to spit you back to a secant. But there's no trig function that gives you secant, just a secant, for the derivative. And similarly, there's no trig function that gives you just a tangent. So integrating just a secant or integrating just a tangent, it's going to be a little bit harder because there's just not a simple derivative that we work backwards through. Uh, but, but how we're going to do them, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully this page is okay. The tangent and the cotangent are similar, and honestly, those won't be, t won't be too bad. And then the secant and the cosecant, they're, they're a little bit nastier. But let's go ahead and let's jump into these, this first one. Uh, now, what you would need to do first is rewrite the tangent in terms of sine and cosine. And tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, now once I have split it up and put it in terms of sine and cosine, then I could do u substitution. I would set u is equal to the bottom. So then I would take the derivative. The derivative of cosine doesn't quite perfectly match the top because the derivative of cosine would be negative sine. Uh, so if that's my u, in a perfect world, I would have had a negative up there on the top. We can always live with the negative not being there. That's OK. right? So here, if I did my u substitution, it's going to be off by a negative. But I would have negative and then the integral of 1 over u. And I know the integration of 1 over u, now that we've done natural logs, I know that it's just going to be ln. Of u. We still have that negative out in front. Uh, and so here is our integration of tangent. It's a little bit ugly, but the integration of tangent is going to be negative ln of cosine. Not the most prettiest of, uh, of antiderivatives. Now, you could check it by taking a derivative, right? If you take the derivative of that, you'd have a, a cosine on the bottom, you'd have a negative sign that would go to the top because of the chain rule, the two negatives would cancel sine over cosine's tangent. So if you were to take the derivative of this, it will give you tangent. But uh, it's not like a super simple, straightforward thing where I can just look at it and be like, oh, I know, I know what that antiderivative is. A secant squared by itself or a secant tan by itself, uh, those, those would be more, more straightforward because those are just working backwards from a trig derivative. But there's no trig function that gives you just a tan. Uh, there is a function that gives you just a tan, but it's, it's that ugly negative ln cosine. Now let's think about it for a minute. Would this be the same thing if I were to have a positive ln of secant? I'm boxing it, so you're probably going to think, yes, it's going to be the same. This negative, you could stick it as an exponent. Remember, we have that rule, so I could have that cosine of x to the negative first power. Cosine to the negative first power means do the reciprocal of it, so 1 over cosine of x, uh, and, and that would be secant. Okay, this negative uh, you could stick as an exponent on the cosine. Now that I know that's slightly confusing, would it be an inverse cosine or would it be the reciprocal of cosine? Well, it would be the reciprocal because you're not you're not really doing the inverse of the trig function. You're just doing the reciprocal, right? That negative one exponent atta uh, attaching and affecting that whole chunk would mean reciprocal. And then yes, if I put that negative up top, then the reciprocal, you'll see that the negative ln cosine 
actually is the same thing as the positive L and secant. They're, they're kind of honestly about the same level of difficulty. That one's got the harder trig function, but it, or sorry, that one's got the easier trig function, but it's negative. That one's got the harder, right? If we're comparing those two, like that one's got the easier, that one's got the harder, but that one's positive, that one's negative. So each one's got a, a pro and a con. Like that one's negative, but it's nicer trig. That one's positive, but it's harder trig. So there's like a good reason uh, to use one over the other. And honestly, I had college professors who some would prefer this, a lot would prefer this, uh, but, but they're honestly about the same. Okay, so it doesn't matter. The positive ln secant or the negative ln cosine. Those are your integrations for your tangent by itself. Now the cotan would be similar, but cotangent is cosine over sine. So this one we would do with u sub also. We would set the bottom as u. So the derivative, the derivative of sine, ooh, that is cosine. So this one's kind of nice because that one's going to match perfectly. So that one just is 1 over u du, which integrates ln of the absolute value of u plus c, which means I have ln of sine of x. Okay, so that one's not... I don't know. It, it's a little bit nice. It's, it's the positive ln of sine. Technically, negative ln of cosecant. Technically, that would be the same thing. But remember back to the previous one, like, like that one's nicer, but it's got the harder negative. That one's harder trig, but it's got the nicer positive. So there's like a pro and a con for each of those. This is the best of both worlds. Like That's positive and it's the nicer trick. There, there's really no reason why you would want to use that one instead. It's not wrong. Negative ln cosecant is the same thing as a positive ln sine, but you would just, you would never really find yourself where you would desire the second instead of the first, right? You would take this one because it's the best of both worlds. It's positive and it has the easier of the trig options. Okay, so integrating of the tangent, either the negative ln cosine or the positive ln secant, kind of ugly, and then the integration of your cotan is ln of sine. Okay, so those ones, you just got to put them in terms of sine and cosine, and then you can do your u substitution. Not the end of the world, but a little bit annoying. The secant and the cosecant are going to be a little bit harder, and the strategy for them isn't going to be to put them in terms of sine and cosine, because 1 over cosine won't help you. Uh, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to multiply it by a very weird-looking 1. Now, it's going to be strange, but we're going to be creating this, this fraction that will eventually work with the u sub. Uh, but what I'm going to have to multiply by is secant x plus tan x. Multiply by that on the top and on the bottom, secant plus tangent. Okay, and now what we do, right, when we, oh my gosh, those bells are literally driving me insane. Okay, so once we have it all multiplied it out, secant times secant, so that's secant squared, then secant times tangent, okay, that's secant x tan x, and then in the bottom we had secant plus tangent, so secant x plus tangent x, so a lot of work there. Now, if we tried to do u substitution for this, we multiplied by this weird 1. Remember, multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of an expression. It just changes visually how it looks. So mathematically, this is equivalent to what I started with. But now this is going to be something that would fit for u substitution if I set the entire denominator as u. So secant x plus tangent x. Let's think about what the derivative would be. Well, the derivative of secant is secant tan plus the derivative of tan is secant squared. So if I were to assign the denominator as u, let's compare this to the numerator. Now, the order's a little bit off, because if we have the secant first and then the tangent second, it should be secant tan first, then the secant squared. But since, of, uh, since we have the commutative property of addition, the order for this addition doesn't matter. Like, you could either switch those two or I could switch those two, but really, uh, the secant on the bottom gives you the secant, uh, the secant tan part on the top, and then the tangent part on the bottom gives you the secant squared part on the top. All right, and we needed to have both of them simultaneously, and they needed to be connected with addition in order to work. Now, if you had tried to do just a secant, right, if you're like, hey, let's multiply by, by secant, so, so we're creating the secant squared on the top, 
uh, that would be great. But if you have the secant squared on the top, what you would want on the bottom isn't secant. What you would have wanted is the tangent, so, so not quite, right? If you tried to do only the secant by itself, you would create the secant squared, which is nice on the top, but you would get the wrong denominator. Or vice versa, uh, if I tried to just multiply by uh, by just the, uh, okay, here we go. If I just use that, I don't know why I didn't use that earlier. If I tried to multiply by just tangent over tangent, right? Uh, tangent over tangent. If I tried to multiply by that one, then you would have secant tangent on the top, but you would have a, a tangent on the bottom. And so we'd always kind of end up with the wrong denominator. If I create the, the, the secant squared on the top, I would have just the secant on the bottom, and the derivative of that isn't this. Or if I were to multiply by the tangent, I would get the secant tan on the top, which is nice, but then I would have the wrong denominator. Like this one would need to be paired with that, that one would need to be paired with that. And so doing one at a time is never going to work. But doing both of them with addition, addition means I can switch the order, no problem. Doing both of them is how it works. And then it will end up working with your u sub. And then here I have the 1 over u, du. The order for the addition doesn't matter, so that this part gives you that. That part gives you the other one. doesn't matter. Uh, and then that's ln of u once we integrate it. And then here we go. Here's our integration of, oh, I'm trying to, oh, wrong way. Here's our integration of secant. It's ugly. It's going to be ln of the absolute value of secant plus tangent. So very unpleasant. The integration of a secant by itself. Let's go back up to the top of the page when we we're kind of thinking about it. What's that thing that would give me a secant as just the derivative? It would be an ln secant plus tangent. Well, that's terrible. Like, we would much rather see a secant squared because it's going to integrate into tangent, or I'd much rather see a secant tan because that just integrates into secant. Having the secant by itself is doable. Having the tangent by itself is doable, right? We did both of those. It was the negative ln cosine, or it was the positive ln secant, right? So, so both of those would have been the integration of the tangent. But really, we would much rather prefer to have those. Since those are just basic trig derivatives, they're also correspondingly basic trig integrals. Uh, but the integration of the secant by itself, or the tangent by itself, or the co-functions that are similar to them, cotangent and cosecant, they are doable, but they're not very fun. They're kind of ugly formulas. These don't really come up a whole lot in your calculus one, but if you want to be an engineer, you will see some of these other harder trig integrations come up, like this negative ln cosine, or like this positive ln secant, right? That's how you would integrate a tangent, and then the ln secant plus tangent, that's how you would integrate the secant. All righty, let's do the last one. And then we just have a, a page of examples, and then we'll be done with the natural log stuff. This example would be similar, except it's a cosecant. So instead of multiplying by secant plus tangent, we're going to do, you guessed it, cosecant plus cotangent. So we're going to do that on the top and on the bottom, which means we're multiplying by 1 overall. Now here I'd have a cosecant squared plus a cosecant cotangent over cosecant plus cotangent. Doing something like this, like multiplying by that very weird, ugly one, that's not something that you would really be expected to know how to do coming into today. But after having seen it been done for you, hopefully you would be able to recognize and apply it and be able to use that same strategy going forward. So it's kind of one of those things where uh, you, you really weren't supposed to know how to do those two. You probably could have, by trial and error, put it in terms of sine and cosine and eventually gotten it done. Because remember back to your trig identities from pre-cal, putting stuff in terms of sine and cosine is a really common and helpful strategy. But, but that wouldn't help us, which is the secant. You have to multiply by this really weird, ugly one. Okay, now let's check the u sub for this one. So we set the denominator as u, cosecant plus cotangent. So the derivative, that would be a negative cosecant cotangent. The derivative of cotan is negative cosecant squared. So we would have all of this, all of that supposed to be in the numerator. Now they were both supposed to be negative, but they were both positive. That's okay. It just means the whole thing, right? If I factor out the negative, the whole thing is just off by a negative. So it doesn't quite match perfectly, 
but the whole thing is just off by that negative one scale factor. Okay, so here this one's going to integrate negative ln uh, of, of your stuff. And so what we're going to end up getting for this integration of your cosecant is negative. It's going to be similar to this one, but of course the sines and the cosines are swapped. And it's negative since it's a co-function. It's negative, but it's going to be negative ln cosecant plus cotangent. Not a very nice integration, right? The secants and the cosecants by themselves, not very nice. But occasionally in math, if for whatever reason you want to be an engineer, right? Because we get paid the big bucks, or you want to be paid a math teacher because, or you want to be a math teacher because you just enjoy not being paid. Uh, these these harder trig functions they come up every once in a while. Okay, in a typical calculus one, not a whole lot. But if you want to go farther with your math career, those are just things that you're eventually just going to have to know, right? Sometimes you just get things that are ugly, and then you just have to live with them. All right, well, here on the top of the next page, it's got the formulas for you. What I would recommend is you also add the ln of secant. You could also add in the negative ln cosecant, but, like, why would you, right? Here's just all the formulas, and it says in terms of u. So this is assuming we've already done the u substitution work, right? So it's got the in terms of u with the du, so it's assuming, like, hey, if there's any coefficients that need to kick out, we've already found them and identified them and done that work, right? The integration of tan is negative ln cosine or positive ln secant. The integration of secant is ln secant plus tangent. Those two are probably more common than the co-functions, but the co-functions are just similar, just off by the negative, and the sines and the cosine swap, right? So the cotangent is off by the negative, and then it's an ln of sine instead of the ln of cosine. Then here it's off by the negative, and then it's ln of cosecant plus cotangent instead of the secant plus tangent. So doable, but not enjoyable. That's how I kind of feel about uh, these harder trig integrations. I would much rather see a secant squared or a secant times a tangent than either a secant by itself or a tangent by itself, but we can live and we, we know how to do those. Hopefully, at least now we do. All right, so let's finish this page and then we'll be done. Here we go, tangent of 3x. We would do u sub. The u sub, can you see it? You would say u is 3x. So that means the derivative is supposed to be a 3 dx. I don't have a 3 dx, so that means my u sub is going to kick out a 1 third. Okay, so I know u sub is going to kick out a 1 third. I have 1 third integration of tangent of u du, and then you're just basically using the formula, right? The integration of tangent is negative ln cosine. You're still going to have the 1 third. I have a negative 1 third ln cosine of u plus c, and then just reverse substitute it. So negative 1 third ln, and then we have the cosine of 3x. By the way, the negative, again, you could stick it, and you could have a secant instead, right? You could have the positive one-third uh, ln of secant of 3x. Or if you really wanted to, you could put this one-third and have a cube root of secant on the inside, but oof, that would just be terrible, right? Either one of those uh, would be fine. The negative ln cosine or the positive ln secant. Honestly, I had some professors that preferred it this way, others that preferred it that way. It doesn't matter, right? There's a good and a bad for each one. Uh, it doesn't really matter. All right, let's do the next one. Let me set the u as this argument, x cubed. Setting this as the u is going to take care of that extra piece because the derivative of my u is going to match that or it's going to only be off by a constant. Here, the derivative is supposed to be a 3x squared. So once again, we're going to kick out a one-third. And then you just have to use the really ugly formula, right? The integration of secant is going to be ln secant plus tangent. Remember, the plus c is separate, right? Do not put the tan don't put the plus c in the ln. Nope, it's just all the way on the right, just separate from everything else. So then here we would get ln, or one-third of ln, secant of x cubed plus tangent of x cubed. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Okay, but at least I was able to uh, uh, pause the video. Hopefully, that, I'm sure that's probably just weird. Oh, well, probably better than me sneezing loudly into the microphone. Hope you appreciate it. All right, so there's the uh, there's the integration of your 
uh, original x squared secant of x cubed, right? Kind of ugly, but it's just use the formula. Use the really ugly formula to, to get it done. The next one, the 5 has nothing to do with the use substitution, right? The integration of 5 is going to be 5x. That's not the problem. The use substitution will only work with this part. And there you would set the u as x over 3. The derivative of x over 3 would be 1 third dx. Uh, you don't have a 1 third, right? Since the 1 third is missing here, it's actually going to kick out a 3. So we're going to split this one up. We're going to have the integration of 5 with respect to x minus the u substitution is going to kick out a 3. And then we'll have the integration of cotan u du. This part has nothing to do with the u sub, right? That's just 5x. And then that one's done. And then this one's the one where you'd have to use the really ugly formula. The integration of cotan, you can see it's ln of sine. So here this is going to be minus 3 ln sine. Let's just reverse substitute all at the same time. Of x over 3 plus c. So that one ended up kicking out a 3 because of the u sub. And then the integration of the cotan was just your ln of sine. Okay, uh, the next one, uh, you know what, um, mm, yeah, I guess we should do it. I don't want to skip it, but I guess we should do it. Every year I want to cut this example out of the notes, and I just never do it. So I don't know, if you're watching this video in the future, this is 2021 when I'm making this video. Who knows if you're watching it this year, probably not, since most of my students don't watch any of the videos I make. It's just a complete waste of my time. Uh, but if you're watching it in the future, maybe by this point, maybe it's cut out in the notes. If this example's not there in your notes, don't worry about it. You can skip it. Congratulations. Same with the next example. Uh, but if it is in the notes, I'll show you how to do it really quick. Although this ends up being a really ugly, really ugly question. You're welcome to just stop the video here if you don't want to. The last two examples aren't aren't terribly relevant, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to do them really quickly just in case. All right. So let's find the average value of this function. Remember my average value. Let's set it up. Average value. That's going to be one over b minus a. Then I need the integration from a to b of this function. So I have secant of pi x over 6. So it's 1 over b minus a and then the secant. So I need to do the integration and then don't forget to divide by the width. Okay, so let's go for it. The u substitution here, let's see if the u substitution, you would set all of this as u. That's just the one half out in the front. But for the u, you would set pi x over 6, which means the derivative would be pi over 6 dx, uh, you don't have the pi over 6. Okay, so here your u substitution is going to actually kick out a 6 over pi. Kind of ugly, but very doable. Okay, so here I've got the 1 half, that's the average value part. Then I'm going to have the 6 over pi, that's what kicked out because of the substitution. And then I have the secant of u du. Okay, and then we would just need to simplify, that's just 3 over pi, so I'm going to reduce it, 3 over pi, and then the integration of secant, remember, is uh, ln secant plus tangent, so I have secant plus tangent, I'm just going to reverse substitute all at once, so go back to x's, so that's going to be pi x over 6, pi x over 6, and then once I'm back to x's, then we'd go back to having the 0 and the 2. Okay, so we set it up, we figured out, hey, this is going to kick out a really ugly thing because of the u sub, uh, then we can integrate it, uh, now we're back to this step, now we're ready to plug it in, right, we're going to plug in the 2, then we're going to plug in the 0, we're going to see what these evaluations end up being. All right, so here we go, we got the first one, 3 over pi, and then let's see, we have L in, we need the secant, if I plug in 2, 2, times pi over 3, or 2 times pi over 6, that would be, end up being just pi over 3. So pi over 3 plus tangent of pi over 3. There's the upper evaluation. Then you could minus the lower evaluation. Here I'm just leaving the 3 over pi in there. You could factor it out if you wanted to. But then I would have the ln. Ooh, if I plug in 0, 0 times pi divided by 0, this, this is 0. So secant of 0 plus the tangent of 0. So now we'd have to go to our unit circle, and we'd have to go get the, this for this angle pi over 3. We'd have to go get uh, the, the values for it. So let's think about our unit circle. Am I on the screen? Who I am? Pi over 3 is up here with the coordinate point. We go over a little, up a lot. So that coordinate point uh, for the pi over 3 is, is 1 half root 3 over 2. That means the secant, right? The cosines is 1 half. So that means the secant is 2. So the secant of pi over 3 is 2. The tangent would be y over x. The 2's are going to cancel, so this will be plus the root of 3. 
All right, and then let's go look at this point over here at zero, which is the coordinate point one zero. Uh, the cosine is one, therefore the secant is also one. Tangent, which is y over x, that's zero. And then look at this, all right, this, this whole right part. It does end up canceling, right? Not because that's zero, uh, because the secant of one, or the secant of zero, that's one, and then the tangent of zero, that's zero. So that's one plus zero, all this, one plus zero. So this is all one, and then the ln of one is zero. So all that does eventually cancel, but it's not because of this. It's because when I, when I plugged in that, stuff still ended up giving me a value that eventually was zero. But it wasn't because that was a zero, it was because the ln of one was zero. So just be careful. We, don't, we like it when, when that zero means the whole lower piece cancels. It doesn't always happen that way, but here it did. And then here we're going to get this really terribly ugly answer. We've got 3 over pi ln of, since it's positive, you can drop the absolute value bars, 2 plus the root of 3. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about the ugliest answer you'll probably ever see in your entire well, uh, not your entire life, probably at least your high school life. But yeah, average value, don't forget to divide by the width. If you get a 6 at the end, you forgot to divide by 2, right? So it's 1 over b minus a, then you do the integral, and that integration was a little bit nasty. All right, last one, and then we're done. All right, here it says a population of bacteria is growing at a rate given by this differential equation, dp dt equals 6,000 over 1 plus 0.5 t, where t is the time in days, and it gives us the initial population is 3,000. That means the population, when time equals 0, is 3,000, and it gives us p prime. So it gives us the derivative, gives me this initial condition, and it says uh, integrate to somehow get to that original function. Okay, so let's go for it. I know to get to that original function, I would just have to integrate uh, the derivative, right? So here we go. We're going to set it up. I'm going to integrate. Uh, so it's going to be 6,000. I'm going to, instead of it being a, a, a decimal, I'm going to put 1 plus 1 half t dt. If you need to, the 6,000, you can factor out, or if you want to leave it in there, that's fine. But you would set the denominator as u. So 1 plus 1 half t So you set this as u, right? We're integrating the derivative to get up to the original function. You set the denominator as u, which means the derivative should be a 1 half dt. Ignore the 6,000. If you want to, you can just take the 6,000, and you could factor it out to the front. 6,000 doesn't really have any bearing. But since this is a 1 half dt, you were supposed to have a 1 half, so the u substitution is going to actually kick out a 2. Okay, so here we had the 6,000. That was already there. The u substitution kicks out a 2. And then we have the 1 over u du. Okay, 6,000 times 2 is 12,000. Then that's going to be ln of u. So we're going to get uh, 12,000 ln of, and I'm going to reverse substitute, 1 plus 1 half t. Okay, so there's my p equals, right? There's my general solution. And it says, let's, let's now use this condition to solve for the c value. So it said p of 0 uh, was 3,000. So we got 12,000 ln, let's see, 1 plus 1 half of 0 plus c equals 3,000. 1 half of 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, ln of 1 is 0. Okay, so the c value is 3,000. How lovely. So we got this function, piece of t. It's going to be 12,000 ln 1 plus 1 half t. If you want to go back and change it to a 0.5, that's okay. Uh, I, like the, I like the decimal. Plus 3,000. There's the function, we, which we integrated, right? Integrate the derivative to get up to the original function. Uh, and then the part B would be really easy. That's the answer to A, right? We're done with it. Now it says part B, use that answer, so use this function, to find the population when t equals 8. Well, that'd be easy. You would just plug in 8, right? You would use your graphing data calculator. You would just plug in 8, uh, and then you would end up getting 23,000 or 22,313 bacteria. All right, you would just take the function and you would plug it in. You wouldn't need to do that by hand. That would just be using the calculator. Uh, and then you'd be done. Okay, that's it. That's going to wrap up all of the stuff with uh, natural logs. Mm, I guess actually we got one more page. Uh, okay, I guess we'll do the one more page also. I forgot about the next page. Dang it. Oh well. Let's do one more page and then we'll be done. So many natural log videos. All right, we're going to fly through this page though because there's nothing new. Okay, it's just going to give us a good opportunity to practice and we're going to try to skip some of the steps of writing up the U sub.
If you need to, though, you can go look at the answer key, right? Here's the answer key. You can go look at the answer key on my website, and you can see all the use of work written out. But we're going to try to skip some of it. Like here, I see that I've got, the first two are similar. But here I've got that chunk, and it's linear. Here I've got that chunk, and it's got a one-half power. It's got the square root. So one of these will be a natural log integration. The other one will not. And it's only the one that's linear that will use natural logs. If you were to do the u sub, you're going to kick out a one-third, because the derivative of this is 3, since you're missing the 3, it's going to kick out a one-third. But then, since that chunk was linear, it's just going to be a 1 over u, which would end up being one-third ln of u, and then you could reverse substitute, and then you'd be done, right? So that one wouldn't be too bad, right? That one would be a natural log, because that chunk was linear in the denominator. Now, this chunk is not going to integrate. This is the common mistake that I see people do. I see them just do ln square root 3x minus 4 plus e. It's like, okay, whatever's inside of the bottom goes inside of the log. Okay, no, that's not how it works. You, you could check the derivative, but you're too lazy. You're not going to check it, and you're going to get it wrong, right? You do not use natural logs if this is any other power besides linear, right? This is a one-half on the bottom. So when you do the u substitution, right, that would be the u, the derivative is still supposed to be 3, so it's still going to be off by a one-third. But then this would be a u to the negative one-half power, whereas that was a u to the negative first. When it's u to the negative first, like this is the only time when you use natural logs. If this is any other number, even if it's like negative 0.9999999, only when it's exactly negative 1 will you use natural logs. If that's any other power, if that's any other number besides exactly negative 1, you would use the power rule. So here you would add 1 to the exponent, and then you would divide by the new number, and then you have a 2 thirds u to the 1 half. You could put it back to a radical, or if you want to just leave it as a 1 half power, I don't, I don't really care. But one of those questions would use natural logs, and then the other one doesn't. So just be careful. Don't go trying to use natural logs when you're not supposed to, only when that chunk is linear in the bottom. If it's a square root on the bottom, or if it's literally any other power on the bottom besides exactly to the negative first, don't use natural logs. All right, let's do the last three examples, which is just going to be some u sub questions. Okay, here's the u. Let's see if we can do them in our head, right? Here's the u. The derivative of this chunk would be 2x. I have the x. I don't have the 2. Okay, so that just means a 1 half is going to kick out. Right, there's the u. So it's going to be u cubed. The derivative of this almost matches the other piece, but you're missing the 2. So there you have it, right? That's all u substitution is. You just identify the u, the derivative of it. How does it compare to the extra stuff? If it's off by constant, no worries. And then you could integrate it. 1 fourth u to the fourth plus c, thank goodness, this one's an indefinite integral. I said that, and I looked at the last one, and it's a definite integral. Oh my gosh. So here we go. 1 8 x squared plus 4 to the fourth power plus c. That one's not bad. Let's move it on. The next one, again, let's try to just do it in our head without doing, without writing all the scratch work. Uh, if this is my u, the derivative of it would be 6 x squared. You have the x squared. You're missing the 6. That's okay. That just means a 1 sixth is going to kick out. The 1 sixth being out kind of accounts for all that stuff. Then you have cosine of u. And then the integration of cosine is sine. So 1 sixth sine of u plus c. So 1 sixth sine 2x cubed plus c. Remember, you could check your indefinites by taking a derivative. All those first four questions, you could have checked it by just taking the derivative. Now, this last one. You have sine, uh, cosine squared of 2x, and then sine of 2x. Here's what you'd have to set as the u, the whole cosine of 2x. So u is cosine of 2x. The derivative would be a negative 2 sine 2x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and that 2 kicks out because of the chain rule. So let's compare this to all the extra stuff. Right? I have the sine piece. I have the dx. I'm missing the negative and I'm missing the 2. That's okay. A negative 1 half kicking out would explain why the negative 2, which is supposed to be there, is missing. So I have a negative 1 half, squiggle to squiggle, then it was u squared, and then all of that piece was the du. It was off by a constant, but all that piece was just the du. So then I could integrate it, 1 third u cubed, and then I'm going to reverse substitute. So I have a negative 1 sixth something cubed, 
uh, let's just leave the, the 1 6 out. So then I would have cosine of 2x cubed. Once I'm back to x's, I'd go back to having those x limits, which was pi over 8 and pi over 6. And scroll it up a little bit so I don't go too far off the screen because I'm probably going to. And then let's do the upper evaluation minus the lower evaluation. Here we go. Cosine of 2x. If I plug this in, 2 times pi over 6 would be pi over 3. We just did this earlier. Pi over 3 is this point. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So that's 1 half. And then let's see. Pi over 8. If you plug it in, 2 times pi over 8 is pi over 4. And then the cosine of pi over 4, it's root 2 over 2, a.k.a. 1 over the root of 2. If you want to use root 2 over 2, that's fine. Right, so actually, let's use this one. Let's just use root 2 over 2. It's the same thing. Here, if I go, if I do 1 cubed, still got the negative 1 sixth out in the front. 1 cubed is 1. 2 to the third power is 8, so that's 1 eighth. Now, the reason why I'm using this one is because I have the same denominator. So 2 cubed, that's going to be an 8 on the bottom. Then you have the root of 2 cubed, so that's going to be 2 roots of 2. This is a really, really, really ugly number. Uh, you could distribute. You're going to have 48s for both of the denominators, so negative 1 48 plus uh, a 2 root 2 over 48. Uh, that would be a fine answer. If you wanted to combine them, since they have the same denominator, you could 2 root 2 minus 1 over 48. That would be fine. Or if you wanted the decimal, uh, it would be 0 0.0380. Uh, zero 09, so like that's what you would leave it as. Uh, this is probably how, I don't know, most people would like it. It's the exact answer, right? Really, decimals, you don't really care a whole lot about. Uh, but this is probably what the answer would look like. That would be a really mean question for, for a non-calculator. And of course, if it was a calculator, you would just math nine it to get the whole answer pretty quick. All right, but there we go. That wraps up, finally, all the stuff with the natural logs. And then when we pick it up in the next video, if you need it, uh, we'll start with the exponentials. Again, we're going to do the derivatives of the exponentials uh, and then, then some of the integrals.